Thank you all so much for coming today to um, my grandpa's celebration of life. Um, I hope you all got enough food. Feel free to get up and get seconds um, as we're sharing some memories here. Um, we got plenty of food, so eat up. Um, before we have um, these sons, Dan and Rob, come up here to share their memories, we just want to explain a little bit why we um, chose this menu. I know probably a lot of <laughs> a lot of you already know, but. Um, Grandpa Lee spent a lot of time um, here and around the park attending music events here at the pavilion. Um, in fact, um, that was usually a summer highlight when he got the calendar. It was like, all right, what weekend are we going? Um, and it was a special event for us kids too because of um, um, the snack bar downstairs. <laughs> so um, it was a lot of fun for everyone. So we have a lot of special family memories here. Um, so we thought, what better way to celebrate him than at a place he loved? Um, with the season we loved, Christmas. So um, I'm gonna hand it off to Dan. He's gonna get us started here with sharing some memories. And he's a little bit too. All right. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to honor a thing called life. The life of Lee Robert Hacker. Ha. Electric word life, it means forever. And that's a mighty long time. But I'm here to tell you, there's something else. The afterworld. The world of never-ending happiness. Dad lived life on his terms and found happiness in his family. He liked to see current pictures of his grandchildren and great-grandchildren. One could say enthusiastically, Lee was a great father. He helped raise two college-educated sons with perfect credit scores and six-figure jobs. I remember my dad taking me to Cub Scouts a tradition I carried on when I took my son to Scouts. There were also the funny times. <laughs> uh, when I was 15 and we drove to Texas on our family vacation. So it was me, my dad, and my brother. And I had his Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme doing about 130 with him sleeping in the back seat. And I was smacking Rob like, hey look, pointing at the speedometer and it was pegged. <laughs> so that was funny. I did get lost somehow, got off the freeway when he, he had to find our way back to the freeway, but that's another story. Okay, one time, back in the day, me and my dad went to play tennis, which we did a lot, we played a lot of tennis. Sometimes I won. Rob, I don't think I ever won, but... Uh, and I played him some Two Live Crew. Anybody knows who Two Live Crew is? This is funny. And the, the look on his face was priceless, because... He's totally not into that. <laughs> Maya Angelou once said, success is liking yourself, liking what you do, and liking how you do it. In my opinion, this fits dad. If any... Love you, spirit, I adore. 
The next one is called um, Sanctuary. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be sixth grade, it was just me and him, and uh, it was in um, Jefferson Street in Minneapolis, and some of the members were really funny, but, well, to me they're funny, but probably not to him at the time, <laughs> but, like, he liked to sleep in on the weekends, and so I would, like, go and take all the pots and pans and quietly bring them into his bedroom, and then grab a couple wooden spoons and start just banging on them and stuff, and wake him up and be like, Jesus H. Christ! Still don't know what the H stands for, for that, but. Um, and then one time I got home from school before he um, got home from work, so I just like hid behind the couch, and I knew he didn't know I was home because he was like talking to himself about work or something, and um, I just stood back there forever. I figured he thought I was playing with my friends or something, and then um, I waited till he sat down and got comfortable, and I just jumped up behind and screamed and scared the crap out of him, and it's like it was a more colorful response than Jesus Christ, but I. Didn't know what I was 
but eventually he got me back for that. He um, tried to make chow mein, and I I didn't like it, and I wouldn't eat it. And I was supposed to sit there all night until I finished it, and I never did. And to this day, I still never ate chow mein. And I I was thinking over the last few weeks that I was gonna maybe try to find a place that had good chow mein. Maybe it's see, maybe it was he just didn't know how to make it. Maybe it actually is good. So I, I maybe he just took like that lechoy chow mein sauce or something, dumped it on some hard, disgusting noodles with celery and slime, or I don't know. But you know, we'll see if I do that. Um, there was this blue curtain, um, like a thick blue curtain that separated my room from my from the living room, and he would put up with me like wanting to do concerts all the time. I would like I would. Um, just like write down what songs I was gonna sing and then I would give him the program and then I'd go behind the curtain and open it up and pretend like I was like on stage and sing the songs and um, I'm gonna sing them all for you tonight. Just kidding. It must be on the So it, I would do songs like Building Up Buttercup and Nights in White Satin from the Moody Blues and um, MacArthur's Park and um, it must have been the Worst sounding thing ever, though, and it must have been like fingernails on a chalkboard. But he never complained and or anything. He and he would clap when I was done, or maybe he was clapping because I was done. <laughs> <laughs> and we were lucky to like live right across the street from Logan Park, so we could go over there and play frisbee or go roller skating. And they put a nice rink up in the winter, and we could go ice skating. Uh, the landlord, her name was Eva, she lived downstairs from us, and we'd go down there and play cards and dice with her, so we played like um, Gin Rummy, the card game, and like 5,000 on dice, and even at, even after he forgot who I was, he still remembered how to play those games, we'd play them all the time. He, towards the end, he couldn't hold 10 cards to play Gin Rummy anymore, so you know we just stuck to the dice at the end, but we were just playing that up until just a little while ago. And he even beat me the last time by like 2,000, 2,350 points, I think it was. I kept the score sheets. And the last time Dan joined us, we both kicked his butt. Dan didn't even get halfway to five thousand. game I like to play with them like we had this game called NFL strategy and you get to pick the offense card and the defense card and you slide it in and it's got a football with a spring and you try to like see what your play result was it say interception or a fumble or how many yards you gained or lost and stuff like that and we play that all the time on the screen porch and um, he was always the Vikings and I was the Pittsburgh Steelers I like their helmets for some reason <laughs> and um, I, was, I went on eBay and I actually found that game this week and it just came yesterday in the mail. I found the actual version from like 44 years ago that we used to play. And so I was hoping like maybe sometime Dan and I could play the game for old time's sake and um, we could just play it while he makes sure I finish my chow mein. <laughs> <laughs> And he always wanted to see the Vikings win a Super Bowl, but obviously that didn't happen. <laughs> and I don't, I think that's going to be the same fate for all of us. They haven't been a Super Bowl since I was seven years old before the first Star Wars movie ever came out. Yes, he's missed Star Wars. He used to give me money every um, week to go up to the corner store and buy those hundred card packs of Star Wars or Empire Strike Back cards. I still had thousands and thousands of them. And he always like joked about arm wrestling. Like whenever you gotta decide some who's gonna get the last piece of cake, let's arm wrestle for it or um, if who had to do something, let's arm wrestle this side. He really liked wrestling too, so not not the real kind of wrestling, like the fake wrestling. That I would do. <laughs> um, he'd take me and Dan to like the live concerts, live not concert but live events, um, to watch like Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant and even uh, Jesse Ventura before he became Minnesota's governor. Way before that. <laughs> the Rock. Uh, and then like the programs we 
before the wrestling match, we'd all decide who we thought was going to win each match, and we'd like mark them down and then see at the end of the night who got the most of them right. And um, I don't know if he did this with everybody, but whenever I asked him what he wanted for Christmas, he would um, always say world peace, the first thing automatically on his, mm -hmm. on his head. And I could never afford world peace, so he just always ended up getting like the word find or a <laughs> puzzle or it's all color you book. And at the end, he started this weird phase where he was always saying compliments to the chef. Um, at first, it was just at like fancy restaurants, sit down restaurants and stuff, but he started saying compliments to chef at, you know, at, at chef at his favorite restaurants like White Castle and he'd say it at Taco Bell. <laughs> Eventually, he was like saying compliments to the chef before he even ate his food. One time he's like saying compliments to the chef after he ordered it before he even got his food. So on behalf of my father, I wanted to say compliments to the chef for the meal we had here today. Um, I, that's thing. I wanted to thank everyone for coming and celebrating Christmas in September for I wanted to thank everyone. I wanted to thank his Aunt Karen for driving all the way by herself from Ohio to be here. set this all up. I want to thank Tara for like keeping us all organized with their fancy spreadsheets and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise this would have been a real cluster if it was up to date and I would Definitely. <laughs> probably wouldn't even have happened yet. Um, I wanted to thank Dan for being there for that at the end. Um, he, he was so strong, I wish I could have been that strong. I, I had a hard time at the end. I just lived a lot closer. <laughs> I wish um, I would have visited him more because I did every night. Because they said he would have six months left. I mean, he'd be in five weeks. And now I lay there every night wishing I would have visited him. And I want to thank my dad for all the memories and for the kindness and generosity and patience and being there for us. And I love him and I'm glad he's not suffering anymore. I think I want to thank Oof Doll. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank Oof Doll. I want to Alright, I'm not sure how old we were, but me and my brother and dad were together, and I thought we should do some arm wrestling. So I arm wrestled my dad and handily beat him, you know? Like, wow, I'm surprised. Holy buckets, you know? I think I was 15, 16, maybe, something like that. And then he arm wrestled Rob. And he says, oh, that's more what I expected. <laughs> True story. You know, there's a, a room of people looking at you. <laughs> Alright, well I'll give you time to think about it. Um, I wasn't going to go, <laughs> but um, last night I spent some time uh, just preparing for today. Um, these things are never easy. Um, so, as many of you know, I'm not biologically these granddaughters, so I didn't meet him until I was nine years old and my parents started dating. Um, but I remember the first time like meeting him thinking like, is this for real? <laughs> like, is he always like this? Um, like he was just different than any other grandparent that I've ever had. Um, so I mean, you know, back to Dan, Dan's uh, uh, speech was, you know, he looked like his own way on his own terms. Um, he, you know, he was eclectic, extremely polite, and formal. <laughs> Um, you never expected um, your grandpa to always just be so formal, <laughs> um, but it was funny and it was totally me. And um, obviously, it's something we all reflect back and um, think fondly of. Um, 
but of course, his love of Christmas, as we can see. Um, so even as a nine-year-old whose you know, love for Christmas at that point is still pretty high up there, um, he definitely had us all beat. <laughs> Um, every Christmas was a major event for him, preparing for months in advance. Um, and we would often go over to his apartment uh, for the sneak peek, uh, kind of before our family actually gathered for our annual Christmas Eve dinner. Uh, and we'd hear about, you know, what was new, or um, I remember the year he got the little ornament things that would cause him to spin. Um, that was a really big year, <laughs> and they were all over his apartment, and it, it was very, very cool. Every year was a, a great display. Um, and one year, he even hired my sister Tia and I to play our instruments at like an open house he had for his apartment building. Keep in mind, we were in middle school. So if any of you have ever been to a middle school orchestra or band concert, you know how truly terrible we sounded. <laughs> but he even paid us for this. Um, so I think, Rob, to your point, like he, I don't know, he, he heard the music we were capable of and not the actual music because um, I don't think it was that great. <laughs> mom and dad, you guys can weigh in on it, like you guys definitely had your mom and dad goggles on, so I don't think you can give us an honest opinion either, but. Definitely good. <laughs> Um, and he always, you know, really did his best to keep Christmas special for us every every year or something. I mean, we had our staples, like the red velvet cake, um, but he'd have, prepare a different menu every year, and he would write it all up and send it out in the mail. I think even before Thanksgiving, we would know what we were having for Christmas Eve dinner. <laughs> Um, five course meal. Yes, five course meal. Oh, yes, lots of courses. Which, you know, as a child, I didn't appreciate. <laughs> have the full appreciation for it. I, the food was good, but you know, kids and course meals. But um, in some years, he had like little poppers, and we could get little prizes or crumbs out of them. Um, so he just really made a special event every year for us. Um, <laughs> and gifts. They were always thoughtful and useful and a little unexpected. Um, like one year, I got a first aid kit, um, so, which I still have to this day, <laughs> that organizes our first aid kit stuff at home. Um, but you know, when you're a teenager, you're like, what do I need with a first aid kit? <laughs> um, and many collectible coins, which I, I still have. I have my whole, uh, when the state quarters came out, we got the big like display with all of them in there. So. Now I think I'm motivated to finally fill in all the states. <laughs> it's been sitting in my like special gifts uh, box, and now I think I'll, I'll complete it. Um, even next to Christmas, um, his most celebrated days were our birthdays, um, and even if our schedules didn't align to have your family birthday celebration on the actual day of your birthday, or sometimes you know it wouldn't just work out for us. He'd always make sure your gift got there on your day, uh, by the day of your birthday. He would personally bring it over and make sure that you got it um, by your birthday, if not sooner. Um, it was just important for him to know that you were getting your gift by your birthday, which I think just kind of shows how um, considerate and kind he was. So, um, as I entered my teen years, like um, other family members, including my own parents, it was harder to relate and talk. Um, but he would even still keep with his, you know, you've heard the term dad jokes, so I will call him these grandpa jokes, because he's my grandpa. Um, but they were just so wee, and he said them all the time. Um, they're along the same lines of compliments to the chef, and you're just like, what? Okay. Um, so I remember when I was a teenager, and we'd have family events, and I'd be coming from our work usually. Um, and you'd always ask, did I have a hard time finding a parking spot? <laughs> Like, I don't know why, but every single time, like, he'd always comment on the parking. Uh, you know, even when he came in, like, yep, I found a spot. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I, I was, it was something that stuck out. And I was like, why does he care about the parking so much? <laughs> um, but back to birthdays, too. Um, on our birthdays, it was always the same joke. Uh, about how many birthday spankings you would be getting that day. Um, and were, he's like, oh, do you want the birthday spankings? And we're like, yeah, no. <laughs> um, so it was just funny, like I said, a very grandpa slash dad joke. So um, now that I've rambled on long enough, has anyone thought of anything else that you'd like to share um, 
Otherwise, I'm going to just close it with a Christmas poem, of course. What else would we do? <laughs> um, but I think we'll probably all be reflecting back on this here as we um, celebrate our first Christmas with the week. And I will try to get all the way through it. <laughs> so, last call for memories. Well, not really last call. Feel free to share with any of us if you, if you don't want to get up here. But. At work, they say, wait 15 seconds on the Zoom call to make sure you know everyone's done, but I'm like, oh. You always say, mighty tasty. <laughs> Julie said, you always say, mighty tasty. Yeah. <laughs> he what? <laughs> I think there's a lot of um, things we could write down as, like, we-isms, um, because you only ever heard it from his mouth. <laughs> it was like, who says that, we? <laughs> I think every time we got done eating, the first thing he'd ask is, like, who's ready to go do some wind sprints? <laughs> oh, <laughs> every single time I got that. Yeah. I forgot about that one. And the arm wrestling one, so that was a good one too. Because um, I forgot about that one. Again, who says that? But need it. So. All right. Taking a deep breath. Trying to get through this. And then uh, that will conclude our sharing, sharing memories. And you can feel free to come and go as you want. And, Again, I just want to thank you all so much for being here. Um, it really means a lot to come together and celebrate his life um, with the Christmas theme. Okay, so the poem I'm reading is called Christmas Memories. When snowflakes dance on winter winds and colored lights shine, Christmas cheer. When children's laughter fills the air and family gathers from here, far and near. I try to celebrate with them and not let my burden show, but the empty spaces within my heart at this season seem to grow. Till oftentimes it fills the days, and many nightmares too, with aching thoughts and memories of Christmas I spent with you. Yes, memories do hurt, it's true, but I have this feeling too. I'm so glad I hold these memories, for with them I hold part of you. So for now on, I'll, so for now, I'll wipe away the tears and join with loved ones dear to celebrate this Christmas time, for I know that in my heart, you're here. So thanks again, and Merry Christmas in September.